why don't we start we'll just jump right in spoilers ahead for the northman 2022 and the imdb uh, synopsis doesn't really give us a ton of information you be the judge from visionary director robert eggers comes the northman an epic an action-filled epic that follows a young viking prince on his quest to avenge his father's murder that's essentially what the movie's about, but it's a lot deeper than that. My notes is the uh, the Viking of Monte Cristo. What I thought it was just going to be uh, a blood-soaked revenge tour. Kind of just like a, a basic revenge movie, right? So he's growing up, and all he's doing is knocking off lieutenants or, uh, you know, army generals or what have you. You know, taking out small towns that belong to Fjolnir, who was his uncle who killed his father, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought it was going to be. But instead, it turns out, I feel like Robert Eggers, the director, really gave us a look into what Viking life was like as much as he could. Because a lot of the rituals and the things that I certainly didn't expect to see, like, he didn't just make that up, right? Mm -hmm. he, he pulled that from somewhere. So it seems like he did a lot of research and that kind of stuff. So I believe it's based on a... It's based on a medieval Scandinavian legend. So the original story is a Scandinavian legend, which was based on, uh, which Shakespeare based Hamlet on. So we're really, we're watching. So, so if someone makes um, a book out of your book, and then you make a movie out of the book, and this is a movie adaptation of the book that Hamlet was based on. <laughs> 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 I don't think we've seen this on um a big screen or even on TV, like you know, the story of Hamlet or or a story like this since the kind of Ronnie Crisco or looks like the Prince of Jut Jutland was in 1994. I've never heard of that movie. So did the Lion King pull from from this story with the uncle killing the father and the, the son um, trying to take the kingdom and all that stuff? I'm, I'm not big into Shakespeare. <laughs> honest with you. I'm big into this movie, though. Um, I did have an been online coming to you soon <laughs> yeah. featuring I, Jeremy and someone else. <laughs> I'll duff. <they> <laughs> oh, what does this mean? I can't read this shit. <laughs> featuring Jeremy and that lady who was a history buff that was on one time. <laughs> there are any single English teachers. Uh, call yeah. me. <laughs> uh, yes. For more than one reason. Um, <laughs> I had a douchebag in the theater again, and it seems like it's a common thing here because it also happened during Sonic, which I'll talk about if we ever do Sonic 2. Yeah, this guy was, uh, I don't know, five seats down for me, but the theater was absolutely packed. So uh, we did go opening night. And this fucking guy, he was anytime. So fast forwarding a bit when. Uh, Fjolnir's new son dies and he's like screaming about his son being killed. The mm -hmm. guy's over there laughing like as loud as he can. When fast forwarding again at the end of the movie when they're fighting each other at the gates of hell in quotes yeah. all you hear when they when they do that simultaneous uh, death blow oh shit did he get stabbed? <laughs> oh, that's how he felt at the end of this movie. Oh yeah. shit! Did he get stabbed? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I take it neither of you have, have read Hamlet recently. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to read his uh, last rites, but you know, um, the so Amleth is the main character, and um, you'll hear this many times throughout throughout the movie. I will avenge you, father. I will save you, mother. I will kill you, Fjolnir. Which is his essentially his credo throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning of the movie, the dad's coming back from a good old fashioned rape and pillage, I assume, which is yeah. the uh, the Viking That's way. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he he sustains like a mortal wound, a critical wound, and he wants to pass everything on to the son before because he, he doesn't think he's long for this world. And he's actually right. So he's he's teaching the son and they do this weird ritual where Willem Dafoe pops in. <laughs> <laughs> Which um, I don't know if you know this, but Robert Eggers, the director of this, was also the director of The Lighthouse. So that's probably, you know, why he snagged Willem Dafoe. And also Willem Dafoe is great, but, you know, 
I mean, I, I don't think Willem Dafoe passes up a chance to be a crazy man. They they do a ritual where the uh, son, the father and son are acting as wolves and unleashing their primal instincts and things like that. And it's very weird. Kind of looked over at my wife like, what the fuck is happening? But <laughs> it's it's honestly it's a bit jarring at first because, you, you know, you just expect a basic revenge movie, not this deep dive into Viking lore is is how I felt, at least. Fjolnir is the uncle. He straight up scars the dad, kills him, <laughs> yeah. and then they're hunting the son. You know, the son gets away and fucking cuts the, the guy's nose off. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how he survived that. Like zero medical treatment at this time. I mean, listen, the people who made it through childhood, which uh, would be not most of us, <laughs> yeah, they've got, they've got better immune systems. They're all, they're only like. What, like a million people in the world because everyone else, you know, died of infections. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Willem so, Dafoe is a is a bearded maniac in this. OK, I th- might have it mixed up. I thought Willem Dafoe was the he, so he wasn't the, the, the medicine man, which man. He was the guy who was doing the oh, no, you're talking about later on in the movie. Yeah. Right. No, he's the guy who's doing the ritual. He's like the court jester at first. He's doing the beginning ritual with the sun. Well, he does appear as a severed head later on. <laughs> yeah, so, so he, he escapes an entire village of uh, searchers and he sees uh, his mother like being thrown over his uncle sh- over his uncle's shoulder while she's screaming. And so mm-hmm. he's like, well, this isn't going to go well. I don't want to watch this. So he goes, steals a boat and just rows off into the fucking ocean. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Twelve year old kid. But then again, twelve years twelve years old back then was it was like you were twenty five, so that's fine. <laughs> it, it was a different very time. Long. You got married at ten. Yeah, <laughs> they don't actually show it in the movie. You actually had three kids. Uh, yes. <laughs> was was he really twelve? I thought he was younger than twelve. Oh, I don't. I was just guessing. I, I, I pegged him exactly. At, I pegged him at like eight or nine. If you just guess everyone's twenty five, nobody gets mad at you. So he was twenty five. <laughs> hey, listen <laughs> if you ever say i need to if you ever feel the need to point out that that that, that kid was 25 you are talking to chris hansen <laughs> yeah <laughs> he said he was 25 so we then uh fast forward and in my head um the oh now it's gonna bother me have you did we talk about the anime about the um about the revenge viking kid the Revenge Viking Kid? Yeah, Vinland shit. Saga? Yes, Vinland Saga. That's a good one. That is an awesome anime. It's still ongoing, but you know, you give it five years for them to actually catch up with the manga and then start <laughs> stretching it out and putting in uh, filler. <laughs> Basically, the Vinland Saga happens bet- during the time skip. And we fast forward to the next scene in the movie where this guy, he kind of walks like he's hunched over, but he's absolutely yoked. And he's just walking this village, like murdering people, just absolutely killing everybody. Yeah. That's one of the things I did enjoy about this movie because a lot of people wouldn't have the guts to make their, their main character of their big budget movie to be this. He's the good guy of the story, but he's not exactly a good guy. He is a good guy in his society. Like, in order to be a good guy in this world, you had to rape and pillage because that's just what you did. Right. Like, he wasn't some pansy that couldn't fight. What, are you going right. to not go and steal someone's golden women? <laughs> yeah. What, are you gay? Before they go and destroy this village and burn it all down and everything, they do a berserker ritual where that's they're right. all, like, howling and shit. The berserkers are the the mindless. Essentially, they're incredible hulks in their mind, but they're just big jacked uh, freaks who have their like inner animal unleashed. I mean, how do these guys get enough protein to like stay that <laughs> jacked? Like, they don't show them like just killing a deer like seven times a day. No, all those uh, stem cells from the the discarded babies. That's how they get it. <laughs> They do put all the the kids and everything inside of a building 
uh, like a straw building and burn it down. So maybe they use that as their meat. All yeah, like little, get a little smoke, a little smoke flavor in there. Jeez. Yeah, the 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 world's first barbecue. Yeah, so this this group he's with again not nice people. Uh, everyone they meet who isn't a good priced slave uh, gets put into a building and burned to death. The, the good slaves are going to be sent to um, was it Greenland or Iceland? Pretty sure it was Iceland because Greenland is too cold for like sheep. Because Greenland is icy and Iceland is green. Greeny. <laughs> they, they named it Greenland so they could scam people into going there by accident. In this word, it would not have been called Greenland because they didn't have, like, flyers yet. <laughs> I'm 80% sure that I'm saying this right, but I think Greenland was actually, like, the original, like, mail order scam. <laughs> Send us $10 for, for your free ticket to Disney World. <laughs> Intermingled in this whole movie, there are a ton of uh, there's a lot of talking about like the fates. Like our main character, his his goal is revenge, but what he really wants to do is realize his fate. Yes. Like, he's not trying to be happy or live, or he, he does want to save his mom's life. But other than saving his mom's life, he really like you know whatever the fates have decided, that's what I'm gonna do. So he figures out that the people he is selling slaves to works for his uncle. So instead of like trying to sneak on board as like a fellow Viking, he just cuts his hair and pretends to be a slave. They kind of skip how he managed to do that because none of the slaves were insanely yoked. I cannot get over. I cannot a- explain enough how yoked this guy is. This guy, he's not like a modern bodybuilder, but he's bigger than like Hollywood Hulk Hogan back in the day. And he stares death at all times. Like, when this guy is making out with a woman, you think he's going to cut someone's head off. (laughs) When this guy eats an apple, he is planning to cut someone's head off. Yes. And it's head cutting off time. Bang the hot girl. Still, still pissed off. There were a couple times in the movie I kind of got pulled out of it. Like, um, when, uh... Skipping, skipping ahead to the to the middle. When he when he tried when he starts putting out those warnings because he wants to be a ghost, mm-hmm. he he kills like five guys, cuts them into pieces, and then nails them up like human graffiti. His uncle's son is like looking around like, "Who did this? Was it you, hundred and twenty pound slave? <laughs> Was it you, <laughs> middle aged woman in a coat? <laughs> no, no, it's probably or." Could it be the yoke guy? No, probably not him. Uh, like he accuses yeah. everyone except the insanely yoke guy who is staring death <laughs> yes. all around him. To me, it was a surprise, but they found Fjolnir very early in this movie. Mm-hmm. Like I would say within 30 to 40 minutes out of a two hour and 15 minute movie, they yeah. find yeah. the big bad. I thought the whole movie was going to be him cutting people down and finding him at the end. Like, trying no. to get to him? Yes. But they find him in Iceland. He pretends to be a slave and he's biding his time. And again, like Jeremy said, he's he's trying to follow his fate. And fate tells him he has to get a specific sword in order to kill the man. And a he, sword that cannot be drawn in sunlight. So and you he, see him like once or twice try to draw it during the day and it won't come out of the sheath. Now, no one explains to me why he can't just leave it out of the sheath. It like, I'm, not, I'm not fitting this back in there. This thing is defective. What if you need a sword? It puts its own eye mask on. <laughs> he spends a good chunk of the movie as a slave in Iceland mm-hmm. and tormenting this guy from afar. And so, banging the hottest woman in the in, hottest slave in the village. Oh, yeah. Like, it's not even close. And I thought, like, there's there's one moment where he comes across his mother and he realizes that she was actually okay with leaving with her uncle. I think they make it pretty clear that she is, um, that before his father died, her husband, she was banging the uncle. Jesus. Because the, the jester makes that joke, and, like, the dude just, like, and uh, the dude just, like, uh, freaks out, like, how dare you say that about my brother and his beautiful wife? And, like, you, you see the look on her face, like, shut the fuck up. How dare you make fun of the birthmark on her inner thigh? <laughs> <laughs> You're completely inaccurate about when she shaves. And um, when he meets his mother, talks talks about how much she hated his father. And she, w- she wasn't screaming because she was being kidnapped. She was screaming because she was so happy that 
um, her father, that her husband and her son were dead. I think she said that he, his uncle didn't want to kill him, but she said, no, no, you got to kill that little shit. He, he, he screams like a wolf. We don't like, we, I don't know why they do that. And then she tries to make out with him, which was a very cringe heavy moment. But fortunately, but... it was all an attempt to murder her son again. And then she go and then like he runs away. And for some reason, like he can just hang around for a while. Like, I guess they don't have enough people to search the island. Like, I don't know how they keep the slaves around. Like, I wouldn't. Apparently, you can just leave. Like, there's no like Mountie program for catching the slaves. So they could they could have all been gone the whole time. Like, if I was them, I would have stolen a couple of sheep and just fucking left. Because like, I I don't really I don't even like working for money. I don't think I do it for free. You know, the, you know, the fates are some bullshit. So he he meets up with this witch doctor type dude who has Willem Dafoe's head with him. Look, sometimes at night, like, they, look, they didn't have lotion back then, okay? And there's two holes. I mean, okay. <laughs> so he has to go into this uh, kind of a hidden area and fight this this ghost soldier, mm-hmm. dude. As you do, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He had to, he had to fight a like a um, armored mummy. I think. Yeah, this is I... essentially a one of the shrines in Zelda. Like he goes underneath and he has to fight this thing for a sword. Do, and do, he, do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he literally holds his hand up and it floats above his head. Google Docs keeps trying to change Fjolnir to Mjolnir, which is Thor's hammer. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Marl. <laughs> yeah. So he gets the sword and and he now it's time to fuck with Fjolnir. He starts knocking people off. He makes his little art piece that Jeremy was talking about earlier filled with dead bodies strung together and put out like uh, this was the so earlier we got the world's first barbecue this was the world's first billboard I guess we'll call it <laughs> well it's more like a viking tag yes <laughs> like what's up I'm the god of death and uh, I'm gonna fuck your shit up like he messes with the guys like living he messes with his uh, soldiers like he's trying to like take this little fiefdom he has apart he bangs Again. the gorgeous blonde Again, uh, Viking of of Monte Cristo. Monte Cristo. And, and then he kills the oldest son. So it's Who the was mother. A jerk? It's the mother's second son, but it's Fjolnir's first son. I mean, there is a certain amount of like satisfaction because the on um, the son is an absolute tool. Like mm-hmm. if you ever met like a douchey like boss's kid at work. Yeah. Imagine if it was like imagine if slavery and rape were just a kind of a thing you did. <laughs> Yeah. And you're still the biggest douche around. Essentially. So, was the theater uh-huh. packed for this movie when you went? Yes. That is wild. I in the last couple of weeks I've literally been the only person in in like my row several times. Really? Yeah. We One went... time that was me mm-hmm. and two other people watching um a movie. Like it was a matinee, but still. So his um his co-slave uh slash wife girlfriend, which was given to him by his nephew, yep. After he headbutts a man to death, <laughs> his half brother, right? Yeah, half brother and half nephew. Yeah, because yeah. half of him is nephew and half of him is his half brother. Well, it's his his uncle's son is his mother's son. Oh, so his cousin and his half brother. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I had nephew and cousin mixed up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I have a small family. Uh, wife slave is um spends a lot of the movie like, why aren't you cut these guys in half? They're 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 still a bunch of dicks. We need to get out of here. And she's like, no, no, no. The fates want me to decorate with human bodies some more. He uh, after he kills his uh, cousin's friends and his cousin, he confronts. Yeah, he confronts his his uncle and his uncle's like, I'll kill you. He's like, ah, but you're not going to find your son's heart. So apparently being able to bury the heart's a big deal because like, Oh, well in that case we'll have to let you go. And, uh, <laughs> he runs off and delivers like, no, no, he, he, he has a heart to save his wife who was caught in all, in all of these shenanigans. And he gives up himself and a, um, and a pig's heart that he says is his, his nephew's heart. He gets tied up and tortured as Vikings do. Uh, kind of very understandable torture at this point. Like once you, 
Why don't you kill uh, someone's son? They're not going to be nice to you. A bunch of uh, crows or ravens help him escape. Mm-hmm. He runs off for a while, and then he tries to sneak back in to kill his uncle. But his mom is in there hiding, comes out, stabs him a little bit. He kills her. Then his other cousin slash half-brother comes out and stabs him a little bit. And he lets him, he lets him, well, it's a, it's a tiny knife though. Those yeah. are, those aren't Viking stabs. So after about <laughs> three minutes of being stabbed with a pen knife, he, he accidentally kills his half brother and he, he's not too happy about that, but that little fucker, like he gave him like 10 stabs. He like, I'm going to count to three, one, if you don't stop stabbing, me, I'm going to kill you two, <laughs> just the whole time. <laughs> this guy has a whole bunch of knife wounds now and, uh, not much family left. Right. Exactly. One family member is remaining. His uncle comes in and sees the mess. He's like, this is serious now. I was, I was trying to torture and kill before, but now we got to meet at the gates of hell in like three days. Be there or be square. And he leaves. Apparently they know when that volcano is going to erupt, which is weird, uh, which is weird. So he and goes it's gates off. of hell with one L. <laughs> well, hell for Vikings is H-E-L for whatever reason. So he, so he goes to H-E one hockey stick. And then he has a big fight with his uncle, which honestly, the fates can kind of suck it. Like if I had, you know, uh, a hot Viking woman who wanted me to go off on a rowboat with her, I would still want to kill my uncle. But I think I just show like a crossbow and shoot him in the chest and then leave. Like, yeah, or, exactly. Or like, oh, there's a lot of smoke up there. Like, I bet if he just waited at the foot of the mountain, his uncle would come down like nine hours later with like smoke inhalation. Like, where were you? Like, here, waiting, motherfucker, then you kill him. Like, like uh, did you see my woman? I had to give it to her a few more times. <laughs> yeah. He'd be like, he get up bleeding, like, understandable. Yeah. His uncle's last words would be, nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he spends the whole movie sneaking around, and when, it, when he could have, like, just killed everyone and left to be happy. And then in the end of the movie, when he could have been sneaking around and then killed everyone and left to be happy, he decided to not stop sneaking, sneaking around and get stabbed some. Really just the fates uh, really wanted him to do things just the worst possible way. Fates but yeah, so the moral shit. of the story is that the fate that you shouldn't kill your brother and try to kill his son because the fates will let him kill you and then die with you. The happy and ending they... is that this woman has to raise two sons as a single mother in the fucking middle ages. The main character dies with yep. his uncle. And yeah. it is awesome. The movie is really well cast. Yep. It is well acted. There's some unbelievable parts, but you know what? It's an ancient Scandinavian legend. It's not based on a Stephen King or a John Grisham book, so uh, I have to deal with it. The production cost is $90 million, and unfortunately, the movie did not make back. It made back nearly half of its budget. So domestic 26 million, international 18 million for a total of 44.919. Yeah, this movie was not like marketed at all. I don't think, I don't remember if I, because you watched it opening night, right? Mm hmm. How did it come into your, um, like, purview? How'd you know about it? Only, only by going to the theaters. And it wasn't when I went and saw, like, Spider Man or Uncharted or any of those big ones. Mm-hmm. It was it was one of the movies we'd done earlier in the year, and I remember seeing it like, oh, this looks fucking awesome. Added to the list, and I can't remember what it was. And I feel like that Brad Pitt movie is going to come into the same thing because that uh, bullet train mm-hmm. looks awesome. I can't wait to see that, but I feel like it's going to run into the same problem because yeah, the marketing is just poor. But there's a pattern of like us finding really cool movies that yeah. like weren't in the trailers or commercials or anything like that. Like they didn't show up on like any of my social media doom scrolling or anything like that. I've heard about fucking Dr. Strange like a million times. I've seen <laughs> every reality of that trailer. Anyway, anyway, seen the like, whole movie essentially in the four trailers, the 17 minutes of trailers they put out for a movie. <laughs> I'm pretty sure like we are five years away from being able of like someone's, of like a YouTube channel, like, hey, I recreated the entire the entire Marvel movie by piecing the trailers back together. There's uh, there's this movie. Um, there's everything all at once, which was a movie. I I found out about that movie just because it was in my theaters. I was like, huh, that's a weird name. Yeah. Awesome movie. Uh, I highly recommend it. Um, and what else? There was another movie that we really liked that like was that came out of nowhere. I can't remember it now. 
Oh, was it Nightmare Alley? Yes, Nightmare yeah. Alley. Yeah, that movie was fucking awesome. And I would like to credit something that I didn't think I'd be crediting, but that Regal Unlimited Pass really lets you kind of explore more than you would. Yeah, because you're not paying like 20 bucks to go and see a movie. Well, yeah, I mean, it, you are paying 20 bucks, but it's only once a month. So as long as you go and see, I, it literally pays for itself. If, if I see if I see three movies in two months, it pays for itself, which yeah. is bonkers. And I've seen six movies in the past two weeks. So, yeah, I'm I'm probably like a two a week guy myself, but like that's still enough to get like the big ones out of the way. I think I'm going to see Doctor Strange, but I'm kind of rethinking it now. We'll see if I go and see it tonight. If I don't see it tonight, I might just skip it. Same. They were fun for a while, but man, you need a second formula for movies. Yeah, I mean, what's the last good Marvel movie we saw? Well, no, oh, that was um, Sp- no, no Way Home and Shang Chi are both good, but like we sk- we've been skipping a couple that weren't interesting trailers. Like, what was the what was the interesting part of the Eternals movie? Not that the uh, movie was just like lens flare and blaring music. <laughs> the trailer yeah. wasn't even interesting. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting that Angelina Jolie still alive. And if you want to call starring in Eternals living, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Has this always been going on? And I just missed it because I didn't have an app that told me like every movie I could watch for no additional cost. Or has, has or are there just like more middle budget movies that are being really well done now? But maybe it's kind of always been this way. And, and, and like all these like smaller random movies are just missed. I, I honestly I don't know. It used to be theaters were full of just like not funny comedies because Adam Sandler was making <laughs> was making more movies than like Stephen King was yeah. making t- books. When I scroll through the app, I don't see like five dumb comedies. It's just one The Rock movie a year now. It's probably because Netflix and Amazon Prime and all that are just sucking them up. Because <laughs> when's the last time we saw a Ryan Reynolds movie in theaters? Prime. Deadpool was the last one I watched in theaters. Yeah. <laughs> Was Deadpool 2 was like 2018. The last thing I wanted to say about this before we give the rating was when I first left the theater at this movie, I, I was a little bit not really sure how to feel about it. I was like, mm-hmm. what? What did it I was just intense? Watch? Like, yeah, the gore is intense. The drama is intense. Like there's a it, it is a heavy movie. You know, mm-hmm. don't take a child to it if you don't want to, <laughs> if you don't want to, want to see a human leg cut in half and used to make a lowercase gnome roll. Thinking back on it, it, I after I I didn't take any notes while I was sitting in the theater because typically I will. And after I I went, I sat home and I thought about it and I took a nap and then I thought about it. I fucking love this movie. I'm going to give it a nine. It's it's fantastic. I can't wait for it to come out because I think on second watch, now that I know what to expect, I'm going to ke- pick up on more of the smaller things that I didn't pick mm-hmm. up because I was kind of kind of just stunned by like, you know, how deep it went. And I'm really hoping because this movie didn't make enough money. I'm really hoping that it gains some sort of cult following, you know, and a bunch of people buy it on Blu-ray or or what have you. Yeah. So that people get more chances to make a big budget kind of weird off the path movie because sadly enough it made 45 million dollars in the month or whatever it was in theaters mm-hmm. dr strange to this point has been out three days and has already made 90 million we're telling we're not telling hollywood with our our wallets what we really want because dr strange gets all the advertisements people see dr strange dr strange makes the money but the northman I can guarantee you is a better movie than Doctor Strange. <laughs> I don't I don't know what I would change about this movie. I, I guess I'll get I don't know what I would change about this movie because it was just so different from what I'm used to watching. I guess what I should give the movie is a movie is another watch. Uh, so I'll say it's a nine out of ten. <laughs> uh, Forty six thousand plus ratings on IMDb for a seven point eight out of ten. Very respectable. Uh, go out and see this. If you haven't seen it, see it. All right. So on that note. <laughs> We will catch you guys later. Goodbye.